Down to the short strokes in the Liberal leadership process, of course. Martha Hall Findlay is getting scrappy now against Joyce Murray, who many see as the number two candidate in the race. Hall Findlay has come out swinging against Murray's plan for cooperation with the NDP in the 2015 election. She joins us now from our Ottawa newsroom. And I have to ask you, Ms. Hall Findlay, uh, since you have come out so, so fiercely against Joyce Murray's idea of a cooperation agreement or this uh, one election cooperation with the NDP and the Greens. Can you tell me just very simply why the math doesn't work out for you? Well, let, let me just say first, it, I have you know great respect for Joyce as a person, but I really do have concerns about this proposal of a pact with the NDP and the Green before the 2015 election. Um, one, uh, it's it's you're limiting people's democratic choices. And the Liberal Party did this once before in 2008 where we did not run a Liberal against Elizabeth May. It, it completely backfired for us. I mean, Liberals were furious at not having uh, a Liberal to vote for. The Conservative vote only went up. And the party is still suffering from that um, uh, this many years later. But it is also a question of math. Even if it were to work and witness, you know, the NDP is certainly not, part, not planning on playing. Um, clearly in Labrador, they're, they're going to be fielding a candidate um, in the by-election in Labrador. But even if it were to work, as Liberals, we're in third place. The NDP have significantly more seats than we do at this point in time. Even if it were to work, replacing Stephen Harper would be replacing him with, with Thomas Mulcair. Um, that just doesn't work for me. I mean, I'm running for the leadership of the Liberal Party of Canada, and I have every expectation and the confidence that it will be the Liberal Party of Canada that takes the country forward in 2015. So just because of the number of seats that the NDP holds now, uh, the numbers that the Liberals hold, and based on the proposal, I don't want to get too technical here, it would look like you have a lot of Liberal candidates sort of giving up the chance to run because it would have been the NDP being in the second place spot. It, well, it, that's exactly right. And that's my concern, that especially now that we're running in the leadership of the Liberal Party, uh, that we're all running for the leadership of the Liberal Party of Canada. Um, the people who are voting in this leadership, um, I, I, my sense is that I, people really need to actually look at the numbers. The worst case scenario would be that we would be replacing Stephen Harper with Thomas Mulcair. Um, that's just not, that just doesn't work for me as a Liberal. I think it's actually very dangerous for the future of the party. You, you've said that in many cases, or at least in the, in the one case where you've not run a candidate, say, against the Greens, it increased the Conservative vote. Is that your thinking of where Liberal voters are, that rather than go for the NDP, they'd they go for the Tories? Well, totally aside from the math of, of whether this would work and, and replacing uh, Stephen Harper with Thomas Mulcair, um, I also have uh, very strong indications, certainly from many, many people across the country, and we did see it in Central Nova. An awful lot of Liberals faced with the choice of not having a Liberal candidate to vote for, but only an NDP and a Conservative, for example. Many, many, many have said, one plus one doesn't equal two. I'm not part of some progressive left you know, movement. I wanted a Liberal candidate to vote for. You give me a choice between an NDP and a Conservative. I'm either voting Conservative or I'm staying home, but I'm not voting NDP. And this is a challenge for us in, in, in the whole, you know, what's the future of the Liberal Party? I mean, I am a business person. I feel very strongly that there's a huge opportunity in 2015 to, to really provide an alternative of that, of, of a, a, an economically oriented party that, that gets trade, that gets economics, that understands um, the private sector. I mean, I'm a huge environmentalist. I feel very strongly about a, a number of social programs, of course, a universal daycare, a national affordable housing strategy, all of those things that make me that combination of, as I say, not left, not right, but, but looking forward. But to me, the future of the Liberal Party, success of the Liberal Party in 2015 is going to be providing that alternative, not moving closer to the NDP, but in fact, offering an alternative to the to the so-called blue liberals red Tories of which there are so many across this country who are really looking for an alternative already and certainly will be looking for an alternative to Stephen Harper in 2015 let me ask you a difficult question then given that message which you'd think would resonate with liberals 
Why is it that, the, that you have not been able to raise a million dollars the same way that Justin Trudeau has, or that uh, you're not able to raise 160,000 supporters, even if they don't all register or vote? Well, okay, just on that last one, 150,000 supporters translated into a mere 30,000 registered voters. So we have to take the hoopla over all of those numbers with a very large grain of salt. Indeed, in our campaign, of the thousands of supporters we did sign up, we actually converted most of them to, to registered voters. Voters, um, as was true actually for most of the, the party. Um, but any front runner is going to win, is going to be able to raise more money than anyone else. We all know how politics works. And in this particular circumstance, when every, the media, everyone has been saying, so many people have been saying, you know, this is a, this is a coronation, this is what's going to happen. Um, needless to say, that's where the money goes. So that's a big part of money raising in politics, I will say. I mean, we've we raised the numbers just came out, but as of today, we've we've raised significantly more than than two hundred thousand dollars. Doesn't sound like a lot, but we have had well over one hundred and seventy events. I've done over one hundred and seventy events. That compares pretty well to Justin Trudeau's one hundred and fifty. So we've actually, I've actually done more events with more people across the country, not necessarily the big rallies, but more events with people where we're really engaging in discussions about what is needed for the country and, and, and for the party. Really proud of that. We've run a fantastic campaign. And, and, and I will volunteer. People do also need to remember it's not just the numbers, it's the math. Every riding, every one of 308 ridings is worth 100 points. So there's some ridings that have several, a uh, couple of thousand registered voters. Each one of those is only worth 100 points. We have a number of ridings, quite a few ridings actually across the country where there are fewer than 100, fewer than 70 registered voters. Each one of those ridings is also worth 100 points. So that will be a fascinating development when we see the actual voting on, on April 14th. We all wait for that date anxiously. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.